the Ford Mustang. Now this is as American as the Big Mac. Can someone take this away from me, please? I thought I ordered the Halloumi burger, come on. <sighs> anyway, yes, there's no doubting this is a product of the good old US of A. Ironically though, it's actually designed by a Brit. You see, the old Anglo-American partnership, it still works, so if you're watching this in the States, don't bail out of NATO and leave us all alone with the French. You wouldn't have a car like this, and it's a, a truly stunning-looking machine, and it offers unrivaled... Bang for your buck, you get it? You see, this thing, it costs similar money to a Ford Mondeo Vignale, but yeah, which would you rather have? Bit of a no-brainer, really, isn't it? Thing is, though, the Mondeo actually feels better quality here on the inside. I mean, yes, it's all very sporty. You've got toggle switches and a, and a nod to the Mustang's heritage, but the quality, well, let's just say the materials are no posher than the packaging my burger came in. Equipment levels are good though, a standard you get Ford Sync 2 touchscreen, and on the whole, it's all right to use. It's not the best, it can be a bit laggy, and if you click in the top right-hand corner of the screen on the card, you can see our full in-depth review of it. And have another look around this car's cabin, and you'll notice that, well, cubby space is there. They're all right for a sporty coupe, but really, who cares? More importantly, what's it like in the rearmost seats? Can you take your mates in this car? So, for starters, if you've had too many supersized meals, yeah, you, you ain't getting the back of this car at all. It's, yeah, it's not good. Right, <laughs> once you're in, eventually, uh, this is uncomfortable, very, very uncomfortable. I'm five foot 11-ish and I'm really, really struggling for space here, but people who are shorter than me are gonna struggle as well. And you can see for yourself by clicking in the top right-hand corner of the screen on the card to watch our in-depth practicality video where you can see me and someone else in the back of this car, how easy it isn't to fit a child seat and just how much you can fit in the boot. Speaking of which, you can fold down the seats in the Mustang if you need to carry longer items. That's for the boot itself. If I can just extricate myself from the car. That wasn't very easy. Now the boot volume, yeah, it's not that bad, to tell you the truth. The problem is that this opening is a really awkward shape, so it can be a struggle to fit things in. Look, it's, it's almost a bit of a puzzle. Uh, oh, I'm sure I can do it somehow. Oh, well, but what did you expect? You know, it's a sporty coupe. It's not going to focus on practicality. Instead, this car is all about emotion and how it feels to drive. Until now, the Ford Mustang was never officially sold in the UK. And part of the reason for that was, well, it was a bit pony. And I'm not talking pony as in pony car. I'm speaking Cockney rhyming slang. It was pony and trap. Crap. You see, the rear suspension, well, it was similar to that of an old pickup truck. And as a result, the Mustang would handle with all the finesse of a drunken man with labyrinthitis and banana skins for shoes. But this new one, it actually has independent rear suspension, fully independent like we've had in Europe since well before 1964. And as a result is that you can chuck it about without it chucking you off the road and into a tree. And it is a genuinely good fun car to drive. You know, it stays nice and flat in the corners. You can feel exactly what it's doing beneath you. The steering is lovely and sharp. The only problem is, is that the firm suspension, which makes it drive so well, also can shake your old bones a bit on a bumpy road. get the Mustang with an automatic gearbox, but don't do that because this manual with its short throw and mechanical shift is just lovely to use. And there's two choices of engines. You can have a 2.3 litre turbocharged engine with four cylinders from a Ford Focus, but you'd be absolutely bonkers to do that because for an extra £4,000, you can have a five litre V8, which is... <laughs> wow! <laughs> My God! Which is, well, it's like that. It's got loads of performance. We're talking 421 horsepower, 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 4.8 seconds and uh, 21 miles per gallon, according to Ford. I'm actually only getting 18. But, you know, what did you expect? This is not supposed to be a sensible car. It's as brash as Donald Trump and it's about as big as his tower. And that can make it a little bit difficult navigate down dainty little British roads, especially as the view out of it is not particularly great. And you can see for yourself by clicking on the top right-hand corner of the screen on the card to watch our 360-degree video. There are some other minor niggles with the Mustang. Here's five of them. The location of the cup holders really gets in the way of the gear shift. If you get the upgraded sound system, then this subwoofer means you get less boot space. You'd think that a Ford that costs over 30 grand will get sat-nav as standard, but it doesn't. 
It's really hard to find the Isofix fittings. They're just somewhere hidden in there. If you've had people in the back, chances are you're gonna have to do a bit of a cheeky reach around to get the seat belt. Thankfully, the Mustang has enough cool features to make up for all this. Line lock mode holds the front brakes only, so you can do this. <laughs> the glove box door is a multitasker because it also houses an airbag. Various track actually do things like monitor lap times and standing quarter sprints. The car makes noises like this. Launch control lets you set the maximum revs to suit the conditions. And of course you can turn its electronic anti-ski control completely off. So then, overall, what do I think? the Ford Mustang. Well, the back seats, they're really cramped and it drinks fuel, but considering the performance, it's actually good value and it's really great fun to drive. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and find out the best deal you can get on a Ford Mustang at carwow.co.uk. Thanks for watching. If you click over there, you can watch our group test video between the Ford Mustang, Audi TT and BMW M235i. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it and subscribe to our channel. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in our video? It was the My Little Pony figure. Get it? Pony car? Pony figure?